Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. So anyways, I'm Wizworld 100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer. So let's get started. So, with Halloween taking around soon, very soon, I figured I would do a Halloween video, and a game that comes to mind is Clock Tower for the Super Nintendo. Ah yes, the Clock Tower series that not many people know about. That was until 50 million people started talking about it, but let's pretend that none of them ever did for the sake of this video. Anyways, back then I had the intention of reviewing this for Halloween because not many people talked about it and the game is a pretty cool underrated horror game on the Super Famicom. That's the Super Nintendo to us in America if you didn't know. Released in 1995, this game never made it to America for whatever reason. Perhaps maybe because it's somewhat violent with murder, death, murder, and without a doubt disturbing imagery for a game back then. Oh, and don't forget, murder. You may think the game was never translated because it never made it over here to America, and that's not entirely true. While it never made an official English translation to America, it did make its way to fan translation, which means the only way to play and understand this game is on an emulator. So if you happen to be one of those high-class console elitists that must play only on the actual console, then tough luck. <coughs> tough luck indeed. Sucks to be those people. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you're playing on emulators or on the actual console, as long as you're having fun. Although, do try to play it on the actual console if possible, which is not possible with Clock Tower. You know, in the sense of understanding what's going on, at least. There is also an enhanced port of the game on PC and PlayStation with updates to the game. Although, unfortunately, it's a Japanese exclusive and still no official English release. What the fudge? Come on, human entertainment! Oh, by the way, that's the company name which no longer exists for various reasons later down the line. But enough history lessons, it's time to see what Clock Tower is all about. Clock Tower is a 2D point and click game using a simple interface to select and collect items and objects to solve puzzles, and to survive long enough to reach one of the many endings that you can find in this game. You play as Jennifer, who along with three other girls are adopted by Mrs. Burrows, who will be living in her mansion. But things soon go bad when everyone disappears and starts getting murdered by the antagonist of the game, the Scissor Man. Although he's more of a scissor boy, if anything, you probably don't want to mess with him and his giant scissor blades that will cut not only your hair short, but your life. During random events and rooms in the game, the little barber boy will be hiding out waiting to cut you down to make sure you're dead and you'll be chased around the mansion. Now, as logical as it is to knock Scissor Man down and snip his head with his own scissor blade in this one scene I noticed, you typically have no way of fighting back and can only hide or find alternative ways to escape from your pursuer. For now. While there are many places to hide, not all of them will work all the time. Except for this one area guaranteed to work every time, which kind of ruins the suspense so I won't say where it is just to let you find out. So you'll have to be careful about where you run to. During these events, Jennifer will get stressed as seen in her portrait, which acts as a health bar. Depending on her stress level, this will actually affect surviving an encounter as having her stressed in the red will most likely make her dead instead despite your attempts at resisting. Not moving at all or walking in a safe place will calm her down, which kind of slows the game down having to recover, but you're not supposed to rush through it. Although it does get really annoying when the game just becomes slow at points. When you're not running and hiding from a $30 haircut to your death, you're tasked with exploring and learning about the mansion and the secrets it hides. Of course, that also depends on how fast you intend to beat the game. The game can be beaten really early on, but doing that gets you the worst ending and the mystery of the mansion will never be solved. So, in a sense, the goal of the game is to get the best ending. Now, a thing to keep in mind is that the game randomizes bits and pieces of itself each playthrough, which will affect what you can interact with. At first, I thought the game broke when I couldn't interact with certain objects, but that's only because there's a different set solution that the game wants you to find in that playthrough. So, you might be somewhat forced into getting a bad ending that time, but the bad endings aren't that terrible. In fact, they're kind of scary. There are nine endings you can get, with the best ending being the trickiest to unlock as you may need a guide to help. The higher ranked endings are pretty good if a bit samey, and if you haven't guessed the outcome, it involves you surviving this ordeal. What? You were expecting to die in the good ending? Well, maybe sacrificing yourself for the others, but none of that happens in the good ending, because I guess they didn't think of that. Speaking of good, the graphics and music is really good. The game has a dark, detailed look to it, and it still looks fantastic even today. And there are some pretty horrific scenes to find when you encounter them, some of them more horrifying than others. Whoa, that's a really disturbing find. Oh my god, it's alive! Run for it! While not as scary in today's horror games, the deaths that occur is still somewhat chilling, especially when you get killed and it fades out the black. 
leaving it all to your imagination to ponder about. If I had to be honest, I was rather terrified about beating this game the first few times I tried to play it, and for a game that doesn't even have that much blood shown when you die and still giving some sense of horror, has to be scary somehow. No, I'm not terrified of blood in the video game, I'm just saying that even without it, it still manages to be frightening at the very least. What is still scary, or at least it invokes that feeling of fear, is the music in this game. It's a very strange, eerie soundtrack that is somehow very fitting for a horror game, with sound cue, tense moments, and being chased by the Scissor Man. If anything, half of the game's scarier moments is when there's music and sound going on. The game sounds pretty great, right? Well, yeah, it is, but there are still some flaws in this game. For instance, that one hiding spot I mentioned really made the Scissor Man chase sequences not as scary since you'll always have a guaranteed safe spot to hide. The slow pace of the game may get on your nerves. The story is not that strong, and I say that because it goes all over the place depending on how you play the game, and I guess the impact just didn't leave that much of an impression on me, except for the endings. On that note, figuring out how to get the other good endings can be annoying and confusing without a guide, but thankfully the game isn't that long to beat both worst and best endings, which leads me to the other flaw is that the game is actually really short, especially if you know what to do. The duration of this game is rather disappointing as it takes around 30 minutes to beat, even with the best ending. Now despite the length of this game, the hands of time has been kind to this first game. Overall, I enjoyed this game. It's still worth taking a look at if you've never played it before, and I highly suggest giving it a shot. There's also the sequels to Clock Tower that I never got the chance to play, such as Clock Tower 2 on PlayStation in Japan, which made its way over here just titled Clock Tower, and any further sequels after this has nothing to do with the original story, such as Clock Tower 2 The Struggles Within, or Ghost Head in Japan. If you want to find out more about that game, go check out my friend Angel Halo's Clock Tower 2 review. It's a great watch, minus a few things. Continuing on, there's also Clock Tower 3 for PS2 by Capcom, which didn't play like a Clock Tower game, and Haunting Grounds, or Demento in Japan, which was originally Clock Tower 4, which explains why people say it was such a fateful spiritual successor to the name, became an underrated spin-off title that I never got to play. Well, that's all the time I want to spend talking about Clock Tower, so I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Wizwar100, you're the viewers and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more. Anyways, I gotta go into the barber for a haircut. Heard the owner's kid wants to learn how to cut, and apparently I got volunteered, so... Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more than you can see here, be sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter for updates on reviews and videos. And if you want to help me out, I have a Patreon account, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my Lazy Work Legion for more video game content for you to watch. Such as the videos I'm showcasing right now. Be sure to give a like and comment for feedback and check out my site LazyWorks Creations and River City Gamers for more content like mine. Such as today's video recommendations is... Angel Halo's Clock Tower 2 struggles with when- wait a minute, I wait, I already did this already. Um, go check out his Doom 64 video. Yeah! Links to all that goodness is right in the description, or click the annotations if you're watching on YouTube.